Today we pick up our Bible study in James chapter 4, verses 7 through 10, but we're going to take this in three parts over the next three days. Today we'll look at part 1, James chapter 4, verse 7a, or the first part of verse 7. This passage begins with a word that instructs us to review the previous passage, because what we're about to learn is, is a result of what we've gleaned from the previous passage. And that word is, therefore, the first word of James chapter 4, verse 7. We've broken the previous passage into two lessons, which we've studied as James chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, and James chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, in which James has chastised those who have come to, prof to profess Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but have not shown true repentance from the sinful nature to actively seeking a new life in Christ Jesus. James has referred to these people as adulterers and adulteresses in James chapter 4, verse 4, as they have not been faithful to the Lord in their relationship with him. This brings up a good point which we all need to be aware of, and that is our relationship with Jesus. It is a relationship and requires an obedience and submission to that relationship for that relationship to survive. James has been speaking of those who have not been faithful in their relationship with Jesus. He has taught us that our God is a jealous God and desires our full attention always, as we've learned from James chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. But we must also be aware that anywhere in the Bible that we find ourselves being chastised for disobedience, we will also find the way out of that disobedience to a renewed life in Christ Jesus. That is repentance, turning away from the things of the sinful nature to living as God directs us in Christ Jesus. In James chapter 4, verses 7 through 10, we're given that way of turning or correcting our relationship with God through our salvation in Christ Jesus. But we must also follow the directions that we are given by God's grace through the instructions in this passage in James or anywhere that we're studying the Bible with these instructions such as what we have in this passage. We're going to break down James chapter 4 verses 7 through 10 into several individual lessons as each part of each verse has a valuable lesson that we need to bring into our lives in having a proper relationship with Jesus. We will keep the same scripture passage of James chapter 4 verses 7 through 10 all together over the next few days as this passage being read together will give us direction and guidance to the whole of the lesson as we look at the individual parts of the passage to have a proper relationship with God through our Savior Jesus Christ as we look at this over the next few days. The first thing we need to do to rid ourselves of the sinful nature that is keeping us away from the relationship that God desires to have with us is to submit to God, as is stated in James chapter 4, verse 7a of the New King James Version. Number one, submit to God. We must submit to God before our relationship with him begins to move in his blessings. This is a command to submit yourself to God. There's a difference between believing in God and submitting to God. This single thing cost me over 30 years of ministry because I did not understand what it meant to submit myself to God. I had dreamed of becoming a pastor ever since I opened my heart to Jesus as a young teen. The problem is that I just didn't understand what that meant. I knew that I would need Jesus to help me throughout my life. I just thought that I still called the shots. For the next 30 years, God allowed me to call all the shots to let me see just how well that would work out. The ironic part is that after my pastor had began teaching me the ropes and I had preached my first two sermons, I prayed that God would teach me the things that people would have to deal with in life so that I could relate to the congregation better. My idea was that he would teach me by allowing me to view these things in the lives of others, not that he would teach me personally through my own hard-headedness of just how wrong I was in seeking to do things my way 
instead of seeking things his way for my life. I'd not wish what would follow in that next 30 years on anyone, but it has molded me into the person that I am today in Christ. The turning point in my life came when God put on my heart the task that I knew I could not accomplish, a degree in biblical and theological studies. After much frustration and about three weeks of giving God every excuse I could think of and why this was not the right path for me, I threw up my hands and said, Okay, God, if this is what you want for me, then fine. I'll do it. But you have to help me because I know that I cannot do this by myself. And then a great calmness came over me as I could almost see God standing up from his throne and looking down from heaven into my eyes as he said, that's all I've been trying to get you to realize for the past 30 years. God has shown me that his plans for me do not usually work out as I would have them. But I've come to learn that his way is the best way. He has given me a passion for research and writing, and with that is a daily devotional Bible study that started out as an email ministry and has now become a website at inchristministries.info and this YouTube channel that you're viewing now. In this ministry, I'm teaching the Bible book by book, verse by verse, to help people gain an understanding of the Bible and how we can apply these lessons into our lives. I also hope to lead people to begin a new life in Christ Jesus. I'm sharing this with you because if I had never submitted my life to God and began seeking His will for my life, then this ministry would never exist. If we want God to be visible in our lives, to hear and answer our prayers, to give us guidance and direction in our lives, to transform us into the people or the person he would have us to be, then we must first submit our lives to him. And we must submit ourself to him. Dear Lord, we believe in you and accept the salvation you offered us through your one and only son, Jesus, whom you sent to save the world from sin and give us eternal life, as we know from John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Please give us understanding to the need to submit our lives, our self, to you completely so that your will for our lives may take precedence over our will for our lives and open the door for us to truly be a blessing to you that we may glorify you through our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.